Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Mariester, Florida. Xavier today has a post showing how Python may be used maliciously even on Windows. Of course, we have talked about similar uh, issues before. However, Python, I think we most of the time talk about it as a defensive tool and a scripting language that we are using to find bad things. In this case, well, the bad guys like it too. This particular Python script was created for Windows. It does achieve persistence by by scheduling a task and then it also hides its window so a user doesn't notice that the task is running in the background. And then it's actually a very simple and not very complex script. All it does is it waits for a cryptocurrency address to show up in the clipboard and then it replaces that address with one of its own. It's not just going after the big uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and the like, but uh, has about a dozen uh, different uh, cryptocurrencies that it's looking for. It has patterns in order to recognize the right uh, addresses. And then as soon as it sees it, it will just replace it. Uh, luckily, it doesn't seem to be working uh, too well. I looked at the Bitcoin addresses and uh, didn't see any deposits uh, for the four Bitcoin addresses that it's uh, using. So uh, maybe it was just a test, uh, but certainly appears to be working and has a very low virus total recognition rate of only three or so of uh, the uh, virus scanners identifying it as malicious. And back in December, when we were all worried about log for j Amazon came up with a hot patch for AWS. And what essentially was supposed to do is it was supposed to disable JNDI and mitigate the log for J vulnerability for any Java applications that uh, people were running inside containers. In order to do that, of course, it had to run with elevated privileges. But apparently one of the mistakes they made here was that it's patched anything that's calling itself Java. And in doing so with elevated privileges, an attacker can essentially run a lower uh, privilege uh, application that is just using the term Java in its name and then have hot doc or hot patch, the tools that uh, Amazon is using here, modify the code with elevated privileges and execute arbitrary code with elevated privileges breaking out of containers. So now you need to patch the patch and hopefully uh, that'll uh, fix the problem and mitigate any privilege escalation issues. Well, now we got updates from Cisco. First of all, the Java Spring vulnerability advisory has been updated. And then one issue that you probably should pay attention to is if you are using the Cisco Umbrella Virtual Appliance, they're using a static SSH host key. So this is not like an authorized key file. So you're not able to log into the appliances with a static key. Instead, uh, the server identifies itself using a static host key that of course would allow an attacker with a machine in the middle position to to intercept traffic and uh, decrypt and record uh, anything you're sending uh, to the appliance, which of course may include credentials. And yesterday I mentioned the psychic signature of vulnerability. That was CVE 2022-21449. It does affect newer versions of Java. We do now have an interesting proof of concept exploit for it. If you do have a vulnerable client application, this proof of concept does set up a web server that can be used to impersonate any domain in particular here as part of the uh, proof of concept code, it does impersonate uh, google.com. 
And Checkpoint found a code execution vulnerability in the LAC, that's the Apple lossless audio codec implementation by MediaTek and Qualcomm. LAC is a format that Apple originally came up with. They open sourced it in 2011 with a reference implementation that was published. But this reference implementation has since not been updated, even though Apple, of course, over the years, has fixed a number of vulnerabilities here. It appears that uh, some vendors, uh, like here in this case Qualcomm and uh, MediaTek, are still using uh, this old version of the code and as a result ended up with this bug. Now, these implementations are sadly very popular and according to a checkpoint, about two thirds of smartphones sold in 2021, so last year, are vulnerable to uh, this uh, problem. Patches have been released now for Android, so make sure that you update. Checkpoint will reveal additional details at Cansec West in mid-May. Well, and that's it for today, so thanks again for listening, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.